neutralization reactions and titrations. So a neutralization reaction is when you have an acid and a base and you put them together, they're going to react. The acid, which is going to be donating the hydrogen, the base, which is able to um, work with water to produce hydroxides, or maybe it itself has hydroxides, um, is going to use those hydroxides. So the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions are going to come together, and this is going to produce water. And then we're going to have whatever else is left over as well. So often if you're dealing with something like sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, you'll get the ions left over. Sometimes these ions can come together and form a molecule maybe, and you get some carbon dioxide gas or something like that. Uh, but you're definitely going to be producing water. And it is the hydrogen from the acid and the hydroxide from the base that are becoming that water molecule. Now the acid will have some other anion, the base will have some other cation, and so that can be the remaining ions that are also going to be present. Occasionally those may be able to come together and form a molecule. Here is a particular reaction, and again here we have nitric acid with its hydrogen ion, and notice that this is a strong acid in its aqueous form, so these are actually aqueous hydrogen ions, and these are aqueous nitrate, that's a three, ions, um, separated, they're not together, though it looks like they are based on how we write our chemical reactions, but knowing that this is a strong acid and it's aqueous, we know that they're separated. Same thing with the sodium hydroxide, and so it's going to be the hydrogen from the acid, the hydroxide in this case from the strong base, that's where we're getting our water molecule, and that's what is happening in a neutralization reaction. Then there are these other things, in this case, sodium and nitrate ions. They do not come together because this is an ionic compound that is aqueous, so they're just floating around in water just like they were at the beginning of the reaction. But the neutralization part, that is the hydroxide and the hydrogen coming together to form water. So a question that would involve doing a calculation for this could look like the following, um, where we want to know in this case here the volume, and we'll put that in milliliters, of a 0 0.250 mole per liter, per liter acid, and this is sulfuric acid, how much of that is going to be needed to react completely given 37.2 milliliters of a particular concentration, 0 0.650 mole per liter potassium hydroxide. So this is really just another type of stoichiometry question. It just happens to be that the reaction involves an acid and a base, and so we need to figure out how much of one is needed to neutralize the other. So like with any stoichiometry question, you have to start off with your balanced chemical equation. And in this case here, we're dealing with a diprotic, meaning it has two hydrogen ions, um, a diprotic strong acid here. Um, so we're gonna assume that both of these hydrogen ions are going to be released. In reality, the first one would be released completely, and then the second one partially would release, um, but we won't really get into that until we start talking maybe in another course on detail about uh, weak acids. So we're going to assume that we will get two hydrogen ions from the sulfuric acid, which because we're reacting with a strong base will be the case. Um, but this gives us a two to one ratio of hydrogen ions to hydroxide ions. So when they combine, we're going to need to double our amount of potassium hydroxide in order to get that reaction to take place. So we're going to make sure, like with any other stoichiometry question, that we have a balanced chemical equation before we go any further. Now all we really need to do is we're trying to find the information about the acid given some information about the base. And so we're going to take the concentration of the volume of the base. We're going to use the mole ratio to find out how much volume, given the concentration of the acid, would be needed to get that neutralization to reaction to happen. So there's the answer. Um, we're going to start off with the quantity that we know, and this is milliliters, so we can convert that into liters. We want to use the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation, so we're going to have to use the concentration of the sodium or potassium hydroxide um, to get to moles. We can then apply the mole ratio that would convert from moles of potassium hydroxide to moles of sulfuric acid. Um, and let me catch up with the units here. So we've converted milliliters of potassium hydroxide into liters. We've converted um, liters into moles, and we're now talking about um, still potassium hydroxide. So we convert that over to moles of the sulfuric acid, but the question is asking for volume. So we're going to have to use the concentration of that sulfuric acid to get from moles back to a volume measurement. In this case, it's liters. The question specifically asks for milliliters, so we'll do our last conversion um, and get our answer in milliliters. Now, note that 
Um, this is a one to two ratio in that uh, you're gonna have one mole of acid reacting with two moles of sodium hydroxide. So don't forget to do this part. Don't try to solve a neutralization reaction using C1V1 equals C2V2. Do not do that. Um, set it up as a stoichiometry question and go through. It could work as a shortcut if you're using a one-to-one -one ratio, but if it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, like in this question, this C1V1 will not work. So do not use it as a shortcut. Um, go through the actual stoichiometry of doing it. So titrations are essentially a process that we can do um, to figure out an unknown concentration. Often they're done as acid-base reactions, and that's why we're covering them here with our neutralizations as well. So if it's an acid-base titration that we're doing, we're reacting an acid and a base together, and we do this to find a unknown concentration. Essentially, we can take a known concentration of either the acid or the base and use it to find the concentration of the other one. So what we're going to be looking at are strong acid, strong base reactions. Um, and we're going to be looking at how you can use a known concentration of one of those things, say, for example, the base, to find the concentration of the acid. How this works essentially is that as long as we know what acid and base we're using, we'll know what ratio they react in. So if they are reacting in a one-to-one, -one, they don't have to, as the previous example showed us, but if they are reacting in a one-to-one -one ratio, it doesn't matter what the ratio is, as long as we know what it is, um, what we would know is that the amount that you need for one is going to be equal to the amount that you need for the other to get the neutralization to take place. To get the hydrogens to react with the hydroxides, you're going to need an equal amount, assuming they're in a one-to-one -one ratio, or if it's a one-to-two ratio, you'll need twice the amount of one of them. Um, so for example, if it takes one liter of a five mole per liter solution of base to react with one liter of an acid, what does that tell you about the concentration of the acid? So if it took one liter of a five mole per liter base to actually neutralize, to get that, that hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions to balance out, um, neutralize one liter of acid, what does that tell you about the actual concentration of the acid? So imagine you had your base, and let's say you had the one liter of it, and inside there, visualized by these little green dots here, um, you have five moles of that base in that one liter. So if you knew that it took a liter of the acid to neutralize the base, you could then find out what the concentration of that acid is. Because if, it, if they are reacting in a one-to-one -one ratio, you have to know which acid and which base you're dealing with to know what that ratio is. If it happens to be one-to-one, -one, then obviously you need one mole of acid for every mole of base. So if you had five moles in one liter, then you would know how much acid you would need to get that acid and base to neutralize. And of course, the answer there would be, well, you'd need five moles of acid. And therefore, if it was in one liter, we can then conclude that the concentration of the acid is five moles per liter. When we're physically carrying these out, logistically speaking, generally what we use when we're doing titrations is we use this thing called a burette. And essentially it is, it's kind of like a pipette, it's a graduated tube. At the bottom, there is a tap that we can turn on and off, basically controlling the amount of fluid that we let out of the burette. So that's how we tell how much we have actually used. Um, and this fluid that we put in the burette is called the titrant. We, we could put, say, the base in the burette, um, and that would be called the titrant. Whatever one has the known concentration, it's the one that goes into the burette. The analyte, the one that we're trying to analyze, we're trying to find out something about its concentration, it's often put into a flask below the burette, and we're, we're added, adding that um, titrant, the known one, into the unknown one. And therefore, we can figure out, okay, well, how much of this known stuff do we need to put into the unknown stuff to get the neutralization reaction to take place. So this point where the acid and base are neutralized is referred to as the equivalence point. Um, and so once we know we've reached that equivalence point, we can say, okay, well, how much did that take? We can take a look at how much we've actually taken out of our burette. We've added in to our titrant here, uh, sorry, added into our analyte, our flask. And then we can say, okay, this is how much we actually used. 
Now, if it's an acid-base reaction, if you're just making water, you can't see. It doesn't look any different. It's, it's clear in colors to begin with. It's clear in colors at the end. So you can't see what the pH is. Um, probably the best way to do it was to be, put a pH probe in there, and it would actually tell you the pH of the solution. Um, but a sort of quick and easy way to do it is to use an indicator and choose an, an indicator that will actually change color at the correct point at the equivalence point um, so that way you know when you've reached your desired ph if it's a strong acid strong base the equivalence point would be when both of them are, are completely reacted you'd have a ph of seven and so you'd want an indicator that changes color and tells you hey we're at ph of seven therefore we've reached the equivalence point this is the sort of data you'd be getting out of a titration experiment where you're actually using a known concentration of something and you're adding it to an unknown to figure out what the concentration of that unknown is. Now, um, for example, here we have an unknown concentration of HCl. So it's the one that's sitting in the flask at the bottom. We know that it is HCl. We even know how much. So we do have the volume of it. Um, because you measure it out and you can say, oh, there it is. That's how much there is in there. Um, but what we don't know is the concentration. So we need to have a particular volume. And so in this case here, the volume of the acid is 15 mils. So we actually know that that is 15 milliliters because we, we decide to put in 15 mils. It doesn't matter how much you put in, but we have to know something. Um, so we decide to put in 15 mils. We could have put in 10. doesn't matter. We would just need to pick a number um, and then what we do is we take a base in this case we're using sodium hydroxide and we know what its concentration is so what we're going to do is we're going to add in to the acid the base and we know the concentration of the base we can count how much volume of the base we put in and this will tell us how many moles we're putting in because we know the volume and we know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in this case, um, we will know how many moles we're actually adding into the acid. And so essentially what we're doing is saying, how many moles does it take to get to the equivalence point for this acid? Then we can use the volume of the acid and how many moles it took to get it neutralized along with the ratio between the acid and the base it required to do the neutralization. And we have our concentration of acid, very similar to the neutralization calculation we did earlier. It's just that we are going to be doing this a couple of times physically because every time we do it, we're going to be a little bit wrong. So we do it a bunch of times to try to be wrong in opposite directions and therefore closer to the actual truth. Therefore, we'll do multiple trials. So here we've got three trials and we could go through and do the calculation completely for each one of these trials. Or what would be a much better idea is to take the average volume of base required. As long as the acids volume didn't change, then we can just take the average volumes of the base that were added in in all three of the trials and do one calculation with that average volume. We'll use that to find the concentration of the unknown acid. So the first step is to take those multiple trials. And again, we, we don't want to have to use each one of them to find the concentration of the acid. What we'll do is we'll average them first. And that way we only have one number to run through the actual calculation part, as opposed to running all three numbers through and doing the calculation three times. We'll average it first instead of at the end, make our, our lives a lot easier. So get the average volume of the base added. Step two is then to use that volume of base to calculate the concentration of acid. And again, we have the volume of the base on average over the course of the three trials. We then are basically just gonna do stoichiometry now. We have our known value and we're gonna convert it over to the thing that we're looking for. We have the concentration and the volume for the base and therefore we have the moles and once we have the moles of one we'll convert it over using stoichiometry the moles of the thing we're looking for and if we have the moles of it plus we have the volume from the amount we chose to work with in this case it was that 15 milliliters of acid before again it doesn't matter what it is as long as we know how much it is it's going to be used um, we then have the number of moles and the volume and therefore we can find the concentration so this is set up as the neutralization reaction before just that we've averaged out our three trials to get our volume. I didn't show the work getting that into liters, but again, you're, you're turning milliliters into liters. Um, we then use the concentration of the base to get to moles so that we can use the mole ratio. This particular acid-base reaction happens to be a one-to-one -one ratio, so we use that to convert over to our moles of HCl. And then we want moles of HCl to show up in our answer, but we also want liters on a denominator on the, as a denominator. So essentially we're dividing by the volume of the acid that we chose to use, in this case, 15 milliliters. Again, skipping the step of putting that into liters, but 0.015 liters. 
and we end up with our concentration of the acid that it takes to neutralize the amount of base um, or the amount of base that took to neutralize the 15 milliliters of acid gives us our concentration of that unknown acid. And again, we can write moles per liter as capital M and say the molarity of this HCl is 0.98 moles per liter, 984 moles per liter.